decision now, then I need to do something about myself. You know, because ultimately in the end, you're going to come to the conclusion that, you know, the address was right after all, you know, and so then you make a positive response to, to that emotion, then you, you transcended what could have been negative response uh, into a positive response. Uh, that uh, negative response could have also continue to be a negative response if it had manifested itself in the form of maybe saying something to that person about the anger that was being felt, you see. And so as a result, we have to do what with anger? Process it. It has to be processed. And sometimes we, we have to give some deep thought on how to process those emotions. Amen? And so, uh, but again, uh, our uh, emotions of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness uh, is greatly influenced by our thoughts. Our thoughts, the things that we think and how we think about different things that occur in our life. Uh, we can, uh, we can um, find that anger itself is not wrong. The Bible said, be angry, but what? Sin not. You know? And, and so therefore, uh, we got to be careful because some people try to use the fact that Jesus got angry in the temple when uh, he went into the temple and turned over the tables of the money changers and uh, loosed their doves and, and, and cast them out of the temple. Um, some folks uh, try to use that as a, um, as a basis to justify their anger. But the Bible said, be angry and sin not. Jesus didn't sin. He cleansed the temple. Y'all hear me? I'm trying to help you. Those were things that were going on in the temple that defiled the temple. You know? And so therefore, uh, he was angry, but he didn't sin. And so therefore, if you're going to pattern after him, uh, you have to make sure. Uh, and see, here's the problem you got. Uh, we don't have uh, the ability to administer justice. We don't have the ability to administer justice, which means that we don't have the uh, righteous indignation to correct anything except our own behavior. You know, like, but Jesus had the authority because all power is given to him to correct anything he pleases and not be in a sinful disarray. We have a choice as to how we will respond to anger and how we will behave. And, 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 and again, um, some of our responses and some of our uh, behaviors uh, to being angry at our parent or our mother or our cousin or our brother or our sister or, or whoever, a friend or whoever, uh, we have uh, to make the right responses to that. And I'm, uh, I'm, I was uh, remiss that um, I did not consider that there are some who have been uh, raped by their parents, molested, uh, some who had uh, left home in anger, some who um, did not have a good relationship with their parents. Uh, some who are not on speaking terms with their parents. That was a long day for you, praise God. <laughs> but again, uh, what we're trying to do is to get you to use this anger to help you bring about a change. Bring about a change. Maybe it's time that you forgive some things. Maybe it's some time, maybe it's time that you relinquish some bitterness that's been lingering as a result of some past uh, events or occurrences. And so therefore, it is important for us to learn how to channel those. Why? Because I don't want to be angry every Mother and Father's Day. I, I, I don't want to be angry every holiday. Uh, I, I don't want to be angry. 
y'all, I'm trying to help you. Glory be to God. Uh, because uh, first of all, we talked about earlier uh, how it can affect your mental health. It can affect your mental health. Um, that's why it's important to learn how to forgive people quickly. Um, forgive them before the seed of bitterness take any root in you, and then that way you won't even have to deal with it. You don't even have to deal with it. Because I'm going to tell you, uh, the seed or the root of bitterness is deep, as well as unforgiveness is deep. And so I must learn how to channel those kinds of emotions um, initially so that they don't present themselves as deep problems for me later on down the road. Uh, and, and so I have to do that. <clears throat> and so uh, we have a choice of how we will respond uh, to uh, that emotion. Uh, we have a choice of how we respond to all of our emotions. Uh, we just have to take the time to process them and, 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 and to deal with them. There is a positive and a negative side, though, to anger. And we must understand that. Um, we must understand, too, that uh, uh, think about a battery, a car battery, for example. Uh, we must also understand that you cannot uh, cross a positive with a negative. What happens when you cross a positive with a negative? Anybody that don't raise your hand ever got the jumper cavers crossed up and something happened, didn't it? Uh, 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 it, it, it you had a what? A reaction. And, 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 and that reaction caused you to do what? To switch them back, right? To get it what? Get it right. Why? Because you had a negative response. And what would happen, though, if you continue um, holding those two terminals crossed like that? What would happen? Anybody know what would happen? No, you, you ain't held it long enough, did you? You, 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 you changed that thing quick, didn't you? You, you, you didn't want to see what would happen, did you? But if you had continued to do that, what would have happened is it would have melted the terminal. It would have melted. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you don't uncross your wires, you're going to have a meltdown. You're going to have a meltdown. Anytime you have something out of order, and if you don't correct it, it's going to result in a meltdown. In a meltdown. And that's why it's so important for us to learn how to deal with anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness as an emotion up front. Because we don't, I don't know about you, I don't, I don't want to have no meltdown. Praise God. I don't want to have no breakdown. Because I refuse to let something go because I wanted to hold on to a negative emotion and not let it go, uh, not be willing to forgive. What would be the guy? Uh, you know, uh, old people used to say, you gotta forgive and forget. Now I say, you gotta, and you better not say I'm old. <laughs> now I say, you gotta forgive and forget. Why? Because it is for my own benefit for my own benefit because if I don't let it go it's going to seriously impact my mental and physical physiological health and well-being because I didn't let it go right and so I got to let it go um, uh, this um, problem of anger affects everybody I don't know anybody who have never been angry uh, and some folks are more angry than others, and we'll talk about that a little bit too as I, as I go down the road. But anger, even though everyone gets angry, 
anger can be managed. Anger can be controlled. And that's what we have to understand is that it has to be controlled. Uh, you can't be seeing red. <laughs> you know, you get, you know, you hear someone get, get so angry they see red, you know. I, I, I just can't, I don't see nothing. I just go blank. Well, you done got too angry. Well, would be the God. You reach that point, you ain't angry no more. You in a rage. And when you get in a rage, it's hard to control. That's why it's so important to control it from the beginning. Anger can motivate and lead to change. But here's the key. It must be acknowledged. Must be acknowledged and the root cause addressed. You know, you, you've seen people who get angry, but I don't want to talk about it. Well, if you don't talk about it, you're not going to get any resolution. And if you don't get any resolution, you're not going to address the root cause. And oftentimes, many times, we fail to identify what it is specifically that has made us angry from the start. With. Believe it or not, I have had folk in my office and uh, a person said, well, you know, I'm, I'm angry at sister so-and-so. And so I said, well, what are you angry about? What did they do to you? I don't know. Well, that's where I get off. You know, you ain't, and, the, and, and, and the, there's a scripture that says we cannot be angry, it's a sin to be angry at someone without a cause. You know, so you can't just say, to me, I'm angry cause. That's a sin. And oftentimes the person don't even know you angry at them. You know, so, so, so how are you going to say, I don't know why I'm angry? Yeah, you do. You just don't want to face it. Sometimes anger can develop from jealousy also. Sometimes people can be jealous of you, uh, and be angry, uh, elicit anger, emotions toward you when you really haven't done anything to them. They're just jealous of how blessed you are. And so you have to be careful uh, in dealing with this thing and processing it and putting it in its right perspective so that whenever everybody rejoices, and you can rejoice too. You ever, uh, yeah, don't raise your hand, uh, ever look around and everybody praising God and everybody rejoicing and give God the glory and then somebody just sitting there ain't doing nothing. But what you angry about? They couldn't tell you. And the reason is because they have not acknowledged Number one, that the anger exists. And number two, address the root cause. Address the root cause. Sometimes we'll sweep the root cause under the rug. Sometimes we don't want to face the root cause because it's too painful for us. And so therefore, it's important for us as Christian soldiers to learn how to drag that thing out into the open and kill it while we have the opportunity so that it doesn't become a problem for us down the road. You gotta deal with it, address it, head on. Anger can help us understand uh, the expectations of unmet needs. Unmet needs, sometimes we have, uh, we, we're angry about some things it is an indication that we have some unmet needs. Needs that have not been met. And whatever those needs might be. Whatever they might be. Uh, but the key is to bring them out into the open. Acknowledge them. And then you can address whatever it is you acknowledge. But anything you don't acknowledge, you can't fix. You can't fix. You have to acknowledge that this exists. And so therefore, uh, if on uh, Mother's Day I'm angry uh, at some childhood occurrence because of something that my mother did, I can't give her the praise and the accolade that I ought to give her because I have some unremitted bitterness and unforgiveness that I need to engage. And until I do, guess what? 
every time Mother's Day come around, I'm going to have some problems. I'm going to have some issues. I'm not going to be able to do the thing that I ought to do because of something that's still lying inside of me. And, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, we, we, we're coming up on Father's Day too. You know, and, and because see, sometimes people are angry at their fathers too. And sometimes they are angry with, a, you know, perhaps a cause because maybe the father had done something that should not have been done. You know, uh, there are different reasons why people get angry. Uh, sometimes um, uh, mothers don't raise their children. Uh, they allow them to be adopted or, or, or one of their uh, kin folks raised them or, or, or and those kind of things. So, so these are all roots of bitterness that has to be dug up. And if we dig them up and let the sun hit them, you know, here, you, you can see the hot sun, especially now, will kill those roots. And that's why we got some things that we need to remit, some things we need to kill so that we can rejoice when it's time to rejoice, we can give God praise like we ought to because here's the deal. How are you going to praise God being bitter? How are you going to praise God knowing full well that you need to extend forgiveness to somebody and you refuse to extend it? How are you going to praise God and enjoy worship in that fashion? I don't know why I'm teaching this, but God laid this on my heart. You know, because uh, 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 I, I feel a little different than perhaps some other folks. Uh, regardless of what my mother did, she's still my mother. She's still my mother. And because of that relationship, because she didn't annihilate me, you all hear me, I owe her respect. I owe her dignity. I don't care if she gave me away to somebody. If she couldn't take care of me and would have done me harm, thank you for giving me away. Y'all aren't hearing me. I'm trying to help you tonight. Glory be to God. Uh, and, and so uh, this is why we, we want to process this. I, I can't continue to go through life angry. And some of us uh, are angry because uh, the father may not have been all that he should have been and I've been told mama she ought to left him a long time ago but she just kept on staying there so therefore now I'm angry and bitter because she didn't do what I asked her to do and what I thought she ought to have done well you still the child I don't care how old you get you still gonna be mama's child and so therefore uh, uh, we have to channel this in the right uh, fashion right uh, uh, anger can give us the needed energy also to deal with dangerous situations or uh, injustices I can remember uh, I came home one day and um, I had some landscape timbers alongside of my garage door and uh, a snake had a came out from these landscape timbers trying to get into my garage. And he was like, and, and I'm, I'm here looking at the snake, and he's looking and doing as if he's trying to climb up the garage door. And he's looking as if he's trying to find a way to get into my garage. So what I took that as, the devil trying to find a way to get in my house. I don't know about you, but I get angry when the devil starts to get in my house. Yeah, I'm hearing me. So as soon as I drove up, he recognized I drove up, guess what? He hit the landscape timber. But how many know there ain't enough landscape timbers to save him that day? I tore up all that bed. I tore all those landscape timbers down and got down in the ground and got him. Glory be to God. But again, you have to get angry about sin. If you're not angry and you begin to tolerate, it won't be long before you'll compromise. And so therefore, there are some situations where it will give you the needed energy. 
And when you get angry at sin, it'll give you the needed energy, no matter where you see it, to root it out. To root it out. Wherever you see it popping up in your life, it'll make you angry and you'll root it out. If you don't get angry about it, you'll become tolerant and you'll become sensitive to it, insensitive to it, and the next thing you know, you're allowing some stuff that you ought not to have allowed because you didn't have the proper emotion towards sin. Okay. Also, it can cause you to react during a robbery. You know, you, you could be in the store and somebody's trying to rob the store and you can develop enough anger to say, oh no, not in here. And stop the robber. It's happened many times. Happened many times. You can see a man jumping on a woman. And it ought to arouse something in you to say, hey, he got to stop that. And, and you know what? And more the time than not, you don't care what, this, what his reasoning is. There's something that will rise up inside of you to say, no, you got to stop that. You know, and, and find a better way to deal with and channel that. That's when anger uh, provides the needed energy. And, and, and you know when it does, you know you don't even think about your personal safety. You don't even think about it, your personal safety. Because that's one thing I don't like to deal with, and that's domestic swabble. No. The reason I don't like to deal with them is because police don't. Police don't like to come out on domestic calls. They don't, that's the worst call that they, they love, that they hate to respond to, is domestic violence. Because I, I've seen the police come out and try to protect the woman, and she jump on him for trying to take him to jail. No, don't mess with them. <laughs> don't mess with them. Praise God. <laughs> and so we have to be careful uh, about how we channel this. Question. Is anger at the devil a positive or a negative emotion? Is anger at the devil positive or negative? Is anger at the devil positive or negative anger? Somebody said negative. Somebody said positive. The Bible said a house divided against itself can't stand. Praise God. All right. Well, I'll hear you out on the matter. You said positive. Uh, okay, so now you qualified it. <laughs> so, so, so now if you're going to qualify it, then we'll, we really will not be able to answer that question. Because now then you're saying that it's positive for some and negative for others. But the question was, is it a positive or a negative? Not, not relative to the person. But you're saying depending upon the person. That's not an answer. Yeah, but which one of us have a different situation when it comes to the devil? <laughs> Y'all are hearing me. I'm trying to help. If you got a if you got a different if you got a different situation as it relates to you and the devil, we need to know. <laughs> because mine is constant. Anger at him is always positive. <laughs> I thought I turned this thing off. By the way, praise God, come get this thing out of my pocket. It's, yes, praise God. It's always positive. Because why? I'm supposed to stay mad at him. The Bible said neither give place to the devil. I'm always supposed to be at odds with him. Glory be to God, because we ain't on the same side. Anger also can be a sign of caring for others. You know, 
Uh, you all remember, let your mind take you back. I know it may be hard for some of y'all because it's been so long, but remember in high school, you know, you, you, you teased the little girl about the little boy, and she always said, I can't stand him. I can't stand him. And then two, three weeks later, you see him walking, holding a hand. You say, I thought you, that anger that was being expressed was an emotion of care about that person. But you didn't know it. You didn't know it. And so it can be a, a sign of care. Anger at a teenager for disobedience can be a sign of care. I'm angry at you because I don't, I don't want you to do those things. Uh, I'm angry at you because you, you're doing something wrong. And, and I know what the consequences and the end result of that is going to be. Uh, but yet, I still care for you. I still love you. You know, even though uh, I, I don't like that. You know? And so we have to understand that. Um, we have to understand uh, that all these examples can motivate, can help us, and, can, and lead us to doing something uh, about our situation doing something about our situation. Uh, uh, it's when, when we stay angry and refuse to do anything uh, positive about our feelings that problems occur. That problems occur. Sometimes we can get angry at, at, at people and not want to relinquish it, not want to let it go. And, 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 and sometimes depending upon the deepness of the hurt. But I'm here to tell you, you got to let it go. You got to release it. You got to kick it to the curb. And forgive that person. W what if they're the kind of people that, 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 that uh, don't receive forgiveness easily? You know, you know how some folk are. You're trying to make peace with them, and, and they still raising cane. You're trying to speak softly, and they still trying to drag you. You're trying to find a means to forgive, and they still acting ugly. How, how you deal with that? Walk away. Well, if you walk away, what happens to your anger? It went with you. <laughs> no, 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 you're trying to get rid of your anger and they're not cooperative, you know. You know how you do when, when you get mad at the husband and, and shut down? <laughs> Turn your face to the window. Y'all ran down the street. Everybody see. They, they know you angry. Y'all are here. You can't ride in my car like that. I don't ride like that. We got to find a way to make peace. Praise God. But sometimes it's, a more, it's more difficult than said. Because sometimes people aren't willing to cooperate. But the thing we have to understand is this. Uh, do I need your permission to forgive you? No. no I, don't, I don't need your permission to forgive you. I don't either need you to ask me either. Because you may never ask me. And if I'm sitting there waiting on you to ask me to forgive you, and you never ask, guess what? My anger is going to reach another level. It's going to reach another level. And it's going, the next thing you know, that anger is going to end up in rage. And that rage could end up in murder. And you could end up in jail for the rest of your life. So which is better, to release it and to let it go now before it escalate or to try to hold on to it? I, I don't know. Why, why, do we, why do we want to hold on to anger? Do we... Uh, 
you know, are we feeling like it's going to have some great value down the road? You know, somebody going to come along and want to buy it? <laughs> you know, you ever think about that? Why, why do we, we want to hold on to anger and bitterness and unforgiveness? Why? Why, why, why does it seem more palatable to hold on to it than to release it? Why? You know, because I, I know some of y'all forgive real easy. I, I, I'm not talking to you all. I'm talking about folks who really have genuine emotions and sometimes uh, find difficult people hard to process. Hard to process. Sister Wheaton had the answer. So then now we're talking about the negative side of anger. Okay. All right. And that's what we want to talk about, the negative side. The negative side of anger. And we, the question was about why we don't want to let it go. Why we feel it's more palatable to hold on to it. Uh, Minister uh, Mellis. So there may be an element of wanting to get even or have revenge as the reason why we don't want to relinquish it or let it go. And whereas the Lord has already declared that vengeance is mine, I shall repay. There may also be an element of uh, a lack of faith in believing that God will do what he said he will do. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we, we, we may believe that, but we want God to do it Be to God. We want God to do it on our time. And unfortunately, God just doesn't operate on our time. He has his own time frame. Uh, but we just have to have faith and confidence and believe that God will do what he said he will do. Uh, Psalm 37 and 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Uh, sometimes you just have to walk off. Sometimes you have to walk away, you know. Sometimes you have to leave the scene to keep peace, you know. Because sometimes people get upset and you can't reason with them. You, you can't reason with someone when they're upset. See, somebody pointing and saying, I'm one of them, you know. You know. Uh, but you know, we're not trying to single nobody out tonight. Uh, but we must face the reality. Uh, but that doesn't mean that 10 years down the road, you still <laughs> having that same difficulty. Sooner or later, you got you, need, you, you ought to cool off. You know, praise God. I'm trying to help you. Uh, talking about uh, this uh, uh, negative side of anger that we struggle with, the negative fallout that um, can develop, and it can develop uh, from various intensities. Uh, it can have various intensities. Uh, everybody don't get as angry as others. You know, uh, I, I have seen people who uh, so mild-mannered and so gentle that even when they do get angry, you can't even feel it. 
and so it has different intensities. Uh, I, I didn't say it was mine. They all look at me strange. It may not be yours either, but uh, there are people who are mild-mannered like that, and, and you have to be careful because uh, people have a tendency to try to take advantage of people like that. Uh, and, and, and that's how a lot of stuff happened because the Bible say that saints are to be meek and the world takes it to be weak. And then when we respond in a way that's inconsistent with how they think we ought to respond, then they don't understand that we still meek. We still meek. There's a difference between meek and weak. Glory be to God. And so we must understand that. That may be one of the reasons why uh, people find it more palatable to hold on to bitterness and unforgiveness is because they don't want to appear weak. You know, they don't want to appear weak. Uh, you know, in, in different uh, generations, uh, people uh, had a tendency to characterize people as being weak because of meekness and they may not have been, been weak at all. And that's what we have to understand and differentiate. It's not being weak to share humility and meekness with someone and forgive them uh, and not be bitter and angry against them because of something that they did to you that from our perspective, here's the, here's, here's the, here's the, here's, here's the, here's the issue. We determine whether or not anger should be valid. And when we determine that, there's a little voice that goes around in here talking around that tells me when I ought to be angry. Be careful about that voice. Be careful about that voice. That voice came from another place. Be careful because it's the enemy trying to dissuade you from forgiving, trying to dissuade you from uh, uh, being angry and bitter, trying to dissuade you. He's trying to persuade you, rather, to be angry and to be bitter and not to forgive while you're trying to overcome it. And so what happens is there's a struggle. That's what Paul was talking about in Romans 7. On the old wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? from this battle that's going on on the inside of me when I would do wrong, I mean when I would do right, good, evil is present with me. And so therefore, I'm trying to do what's right, but evil keeps tugging at me. Why, how does he tug? By talking in my ears and telling me things that, that I should think and the way that I should respond and the way that I should react to different stimuluses when the word of God is telling me I need to do something else. And so the Word of God tells me that I have to forgive. The Word of God tells me that, guess what? I can't draw forgiveness except to the extent that I extend it. The Word of God says I can't give a quart of forgiveness and draw out a gallon. No, I hear I'm trying to help you. So if I only give a quart, then God says you're only drawing out a quart. With the same meat. Y'all don't hear me. That you forgive others, be meaning to you. And so therefore you have to understand that and process this and get delivered from this so that it does not hinder your testimony, so that it does not hinder your praise. The enemy will do anything to stop you from praising God. He'll do anything to distract you from giving God the glory that belongs to him. It, it'll do anything. He'll bring back stuff that happened 40 years ago, amen, and cause you to get angry about it right now. You ain't even thought about it in 40 years just to distract you from giving God the praise. But I come to let you know today that you got to process, amen, this anger and wrath and bitterness and unforgiveness and let it go. It has no place in the life of a saint of God. So you got to let it go and you have to, re you have to get on that altar and you have to ask God to help you to forgive. Help you forgive. And when we do, then guess what? We can have a great time in praising and worshiping and giving God the glory because you can't praise God mad no way. You can't praise God mad and you can't pray mad. You can't pray mad. 
And see, that, therein lies, that's the problem. See, we get mad because we ain't praying. Because if you were praying, you couldn't be mad. I ain't never seen nobody pray and be mad. I see some folk not pray and be mad. But therein lies the problem. Because we're not praying. This intensity that develops from anger can be mild, intense fury, or it can be rage. It can be rage. You will be surprised at some of the mindset and some of the baggage and some of the things that people are carrying subconsciously today. And some of it conscious, but just have not shared it and have difficult, difficulty releasing it. I, I, the thing you have to understand is this. Before you can be delivered from it, you have to confess it. You, you have to confess it. Whether it's on Dr. Phil's show, or, or, or whether it's in my office, or whether, y'all, I'm trying to help you. Because you cannot get delivered from anything you don't acknowledge. That's the first thing that even Dr. Phil requires is that you acknowledge it. That you acknowledge it. And if you don't acknowledge it, you don't even deal with it. God, now if he's like that, how much more doesn't God require? Because the Bible says what? If a man what? Will confess his faults before the Lord that God is what? Faithful and just to what? To forgive him and to do what? Cleanse him from all unrighteousness. So you got to acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge, yeah, I'm upset. I'm, I'm, I'm upset. No matter what it, what it is, I'm upset. But don't be upset and not know why you upset. Y'all, I'm trying to help you. I'm just mad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you, know uh, you know, true enough. Uh, and, and sometimes you have to be careful because the enemy can lead you down that path and have you angry at somebody and they ain't did nothing to you. I, I just don't, I, I just don't like them. You know, you meet some people, you just don't, well, that's anti-scriptural. Being angry at somebody and they haven't done anything to you for you to be angry with them about, you know. So anger creates a physical response. It creates a physical response. Anger causes your heart rate to increase, your blood pressure to increase, your respiration to increase, and it also causes you to release a negative hormone, which will impact and have an impact on your body. Now here's the deal. Now can you imagine being angry at somebody and it's killing you, but they don't even know you angry. You dying a slow death, and they don't even know you angry. Why? Because you haven't attempted to reconcile. Only you know that you're angry. Y'all are hearing me. So why would I kill myself being angry at someone else when they don't even know it. Yes, they do. I told them, yeah, but you haven't released it. And if you told them and they didn't do anything about it and didn't say anything about it, chances are they were unaffected. But as long as you hold on to it, you're going to be affected. I told them and they didn't say nothing. So therefore, I, they meant to hurt me. Okay. Well, if they meant to hurt you, and you still hurting, and you told them, and it doesn't phase them, and you already know that your blood pressure up, taking all kind of blood pressure medicine, you know, heart rate increase, palpitating heart, beating in your chest, 
you know, because you don't want to let it go. You don't want to process it. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a great weapon of the enemy against the saints of God because he realizes that as long as you're angry, bitter, or unforgiven, you're not going to be any threat to him because there's not going to be anything in your worship that will affect him or move him. He understands that and that's the reason why he put that blockage there for you so that you cannot be effective in your ministry. You can't be effective in your worship, nor can you be effective in your interpersonal relationships. No wonder you haven't found a husband yet. You're too mean and angry because you have not processed it and gotten rid of that bitterness from the past. Still angry. You got to let it go. Look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. Breathe. You got you to gotta let it go. You, you got to exhaust that wind in your jaw. You know, you got to let it go. Breathe. Anger can lead to depression, anxiety, eating disorders murders, rage, and just plain outright wrong decisions. Because when you're angry, you can't think clearly. And, and some you all remember uh, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, well, the second greatest, uh, because he found out God is greatest now. Uh, <laughs> you remember how he would always taunt his opponents? how he would get up in their face and, 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 and just try to just make them just as angry as they could be at him. And he would even roughhouse with them sometimes just to, to get them going. There was a reason for that. He realized that if I can get my opponent angry, he won't be able to think clear. And when he doesn't think clear, then he leaves himself open. I don't know who God ministered to tonight. When you don't think clear, you're leaving yourself open to the attacks of the enemy. So instead of you getting angry, why don't you make the devil mad? Y'all are here. I'm trying to help you. Glory be to God. Why, why don't you make him angry? The way you make him angry is doing the opposite of what he wants you to do. When he wants you to be mad, then you be happy. He wants you to be stingy, then you be free-hearted. You, 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 whatever the, op the opposite of whatever it is he wants you to do, you do it. And that'll make him angry. He, see, he don't want you to praise God, so the more he don't want you to praise God, the more you ought to give God the praise. He don't want you praying, so the more you ought to pray. Huh? He don't want you to do what's right and love your neighbor. He wants you to be mad and angry at your neighbor. So you ought to love your neighbor the more. The opposite of what he does. Why? Because it makes him angry. All, all, all I need to do is just find out what makes him angry. That's all I need to know. Because that's what I'm going to do. And make him angry. Uh, anger affects both physical and mental health. Now, that being said... This element of mental health is creeping up on us in our society. We have neglected and have hid Bobby in the closet away from the rest of society and not face the real problems and the real issues to now it's almost epidemic. It's almost epidemic. And we still have not made any appropriations or made any strides or taken time to even consider the issue in our national government. And it's becoming, it's gonna become more and more problem because mental health, guess what? Doesn't get better without care or treatment. It doesn't get better, it gets worse. 
And so we must understand this. So therefore, I don't need anything that's going to drive me closer. So therefore, I got to process this. The other negative consequences uh, that comes from uh, poor anger management is major and minor relationship problems. Major and minor relationship problems. Negative thinking and acting out. Verbal and emotional, physical and sexual abuse comes from anger. anger. Many young men who engage in abusive behavior towards women experience some degree of abuse themselves at the hands of a woman. And it is their response. It is their response. I, I'm, I'm old enough now, I'm big enough now uh, that, that I don't have to take that and, 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 and the next thing you know they are avenging what happened to them as young men. Some of them, many of them, a lot of them may have been raised by a single parent, single mother, and 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 being raised, um, you know, uh, my mama told me all the time what to do. I'm tired of women telling me what to do. Now he starts to hate women preachers. He starts hate hate women police. Starts hating any woman in any authoritarian authoritative position as a result of that negative experience that he never processed that never dealt, never was dealt with, never was dragged out into the open and dealt with. And so that's why it's so important tonight, uh, as a reason why I'm saying to you that we must deal with these emotions, this anger and bitterness and unforgiving spirits. We must deal with them and we must process them. We must research what it is that I'm angry about. Sometimes uh, I can just be disappointed you know, I've, I've heard people say, I thought that I'd be further along in life by now. And that become a catalyst for the wrong kind of spirit to develop in that person. If not processed, who told you you ought to be further along? Who told you that you ought to be as far as you are? You know, I'm trying to help you. Glory be to God. But when we don't process things, the way that we ought to process them, it leads to negative behaviors. It leads to negative response. It leads to bitterness. It leads to anger. It leads to uh, poor interpersonal relationships. And believe it or not, some of these things can spill over into uh, marriage relationships. You know, marriage relationships. You know, our marriage and divorce rate is not high for nothing. Somebody ain't getting along. Y'all are here. And, and you can't tell me everybody forgiving each other and going their separate ways. No, somebody holding on to something. And we have to let go. We have to process. I know that'll shout message, but it's a godly message. Hallelujah. Y'all are here. I'm trying to help you. God, God commands us to forgive. Command us. For, uh, uh, Psalm 37 8, cease from anger. Got your neighbor, say neighbor. The Bible says, "Stop being angry." Glory be to God. Smile sometimes. Let me see. I, I don't even know if you got tea. I haven't seen you smile in so long. Glory be to God. Uh, stop thinking negative. This negative. Uh, Emotion can also result in crimes and violence. It can also result in being a control freak. You got folks so, so controlling, they won't even let you watch your TV show. <laughs> All right. They won't even let you hold a remote control. 
Think about it, those of you who are married. Which side of the bed is the remote control on? That'll tell you who the control freak is. If you got to go hunting the remote control all the time, because they won't let you hold it, there's something wrong. It's under control. What happens when, what, what, what happens when, when I get the uh, emotion that I can't control it? Oh, y'all looking at me strange now. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, I don't never try to control nobody. Lying lips, loose here. <laughs> Probably the biggest control freak in the house. What happens? What happens? What happens when people try to control you and they discern that you're not to be controlled? What happens? They get what? They get angry. Why? Why? I mean, you're not a horse. You know, we put bits in the horse's mouth to control him. So why would a person get angry because they can't control you? Or do you get angry when you can't control others? Now I've got to discern who it, who's really angry. Are they angry because they can't control you? Or are you angry because you can't control them? See. So then we find that these um, emotions can come from different and varying directions and from different and varying causes and breaches. So what does that matter? Where they came from? We know all of them came from what? The pits of what? Hell. Because any, anything that would cause you to be angry with another person come from the devil. Because God has commanded us what? To love each other. Even as I have loved you. So therefore, these emotions come from the enemy. And we need to channel them in the right way. That's why it's so important for me to find myself at the altar frequently. Lord, help me to forgive some folks that have done me wrong. Help me to forgive some folks that didn't do me right. Help me, Lord, not to hold grudges against folks that have done things that, that weren't uh, 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 nice to me. Lord, help me to release God and let me not be angry at someone without a cause. Help me. See, I got to get on the altar myself. I, I got to ask God to purge me because guess what? If I don't pray and I don't ask God to help me and, and stop seeing the other person as being the culprit all the time, you know, because see, sometimes uh, uh, I'm, I'm the one. I, I got to get, the Lord told me to get what? The law got a mind before I start trying to re remove what? The, the, the moat out of somebody else's eye. So therefore, I got to deal with me first. I, it doesn't matter with me whether or not they ever repent and ask for forgiveness. Lord, I got to forgive them. Lord, help me to have a forgiving spirit. Lord, don't let no bitter root spring up in me. God, and take root and, 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 and try to bear in me. Lord, help me to forgive them. Even though, God, they may never come and ask me. Lord, they may never even acknowledge or admit that they did anything wrong to me. But God, help me to forgive them so that I can be in the proper relationship so that when it's time to go into the house of God, when it's time to give praise to God, when it's time to worship, when it's time to exalt you, Lord, I don't have anything impeding me. I don't have anything in my way. I don't have anything stopping me from giving you the praise and the glory that's due your name. Oh, God, I pray. See, I'm talking about praying and asking God to help me because, see, sometimes the enemy will have you feeling like your, just, your, your anger is justified. You know, what is justified anger? I mean, what does that mean to God? That doesn't mean anything to God. You just you can be justified. In fact, let's for sake of conversation, let's just say you right. Let's just say you all right. But guess what? I don't want to be dead right. See? And so sometimes we have to 
you know, we have to loosen up. We have to let some things go. We need to process and we need to grow and mature a little bit more ourselves instead of trying to put it all in everybody else's court when the truth be told, I ain't been to the altar in a long time. And get there and kneel down on the altar, amen, and your knees hit the floor and the floor say, amen, what you doing down here? Amen, you ain't been down there in so long. Glory be to God. We got to forgive. We got to forgive. And when you forgive, guess what? You free. You free. You know, I'm not talking about freeing somebody else tonight. I'm talking about freeing you. I'm talking about us getting free. So that when we come in the house of God, everybody can be on one accord. And when we get on one accord, guess what? The Spirit of the Lord will dwell in the midst of us, and then somebody can get some deliverance. Then somebody can get some victory because of the Spirit that rests in the place. You know, we can't have no, 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 no deliverance if half of the room, well, a third of the room is on fire for the Lord. Another third uh, don't even recognize they're on fire. And the other third don't even care. You know, you can't get victory like that. You can't get victory like that. And so uh, my uh, 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 commitment to you is this. Regardless of the relationship, starting today, you all hear me, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, today going to be the best day of your life. Starting today. Huh? Come on right now. I got to lift my hands right now. Lord, if there's anything in me right now, God, if I hold any anger, any bitterness, any root, any unforgiveness toward anybody, Lord, I pray that you will reveal it right now, God. I pray that you will take it out of me right now, God. God, I pray right now that you will strengthen my heart right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I don't want to miss heaven because I'm too honored to let go of some things in the past. God, I let them go right now in the name of Jesus. I don't care if they were abuses. I don't care if they were trespassing. Whatever they were, God, I'm processing it right now, and I'm letting it go right now. I'm releasing it right now, and when I want walk out of that door, God, I'm going to be free tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now that I'm free, God, I can go help somebody else. Get free tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God, I let it go tonight. I release it tonight, God. I found out tonight, God, that it has no significant value for me, God, that it can only be a problem for me later on down the road, God, that it's going to affect my health, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I don't want my health affected. Lord, I don't want to be laid up in the hospital, God, because I'm bitter, because I'm angry, because I won't let go of the things that life has dealt me. God, I pray right now. Hallelujah. For the healing to take place right now. Let it begin right now, God, in the name of Jesus. In fact, God, if I can think of anybody, God, that I owe any forgiveness, God, I'm going to call them and tell them, God, I forgive you. Amen. Whether they acknowledge it or not, whether they want to hear it or not, and if I trespass, I'm asking somebody, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, you know. I was wrong. Glory be to God. And God, I want you to do it. And we're getting ready to close now. But we have to be careful about angry influences. 1 Kings 19 and 1. Angry influences. You know, sometimes you got folks that can influence you to be angry. Child, I wouldn't take that. You know, I, I, I'd have to, I'd, I would just have to do something. Yeah. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Why? He was the king. <laughs> he was the king. Why was he telling, why was he telling Jezebel? He was the king. He's supposed to do something about it. But he was too weak back and jelly back to do anything about it. So he's going to tell Jezebel. Why? Because he was mad at Elijah and he knew his wife. And 
And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the God. She didn't get no permission from Ahab. She didn't get no permission. Ahab was the king. How are you going to be sending out letters to somebody and messages to somebody without the king's approval? Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And if I had to preach that, I would say, have it your way. <laughs> what would be the God? Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under. Wait a minute. Verse, verse 3. You skipped the verse there somewhere. There you go. When Elijah saw that, he, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. All right? But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now. O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. All right, verse 5. And as he lay and slept on a juniper tree, behold, an angel, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise, eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. That's far enough. The first verse, first verse was the thing that I wanted to uh, show you how uh, folks can influence others to be angry. You know, you can, you can say something to people that will infuriate them against somebody else. You know, and so be careful about angry or anger influences. Anger influences. Uh, uh, some people are more prone to anger than others. And some, of, some of us have a low tolerance for frustration. Can't stand to be frustrated. In a little thing, some of us annoy and frustrate us. Uh, some children or babies, when they're born, seem to be more edgy and irritable than others. You see, cry all the time. Y'all ever seen babies cry all the time? And a, and a bit of water coming out there, you know. In my day, they wouldn't mess with you. You, you crying and ain't no water coming out your eyes. They say, you just hollering. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with you, you know. And uh, some of them uh, um, are cranky, prone to be upset a lot. And there are some thoughts that it is genetically motivated. I don't know, you know, I, I've never really tried to look at the parents of these children, but it could be genetically predisposition also may have some uh, inherent this uh, in it uh, that predisposes them to, to being more angry than others. And maybe you have noticed people uh, in your uh, lifetime that you come in contact with that is more predisposed to anger than, than others. You know, maybe in your office, you may have somebody in your office that's, that's, that, that nobody's never say anything to because they don't know how they're going to respond because of their predisposition to anger. I know I, I had some about everywhere I went. I found there was one, always one, in the office like that. Amen? So well, is it genetically motivated or is it just sinfully motivated? These are some of the things that we can think about. Uh, but we do need to learn how to process anger. It can be controlled. You know, otherwise, all them people who teach in anger management is just stealing people money. Another, another somebody begs a different from, all right.
How do you get angry by three or four years old? Can anybody help? That was the question. How do you get angry by three or four years old? Thank you. Abuse and neglect can generate anger in a child three or four years old. Yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah, neglect. A learned behavior. Oh, well, again, abuse and neglect. You learn from, you know, if you beat me up all the time, you're angry at me all the time, then it ain't going to take long for me to be angry too, you know, about what you're doing to me. You know, so therefore, it is a learned behavior. You know, you didn't come here angry. You didn't know what anger was. You didn't have no programming. Your hard drive was clean when you came. But then again, we get back to that genetical argument again. Is there some predisposition because of the genetics of the, of the parents? Because, you, you know, you're a, pro, you're, you're a product of two people. One of them may be more prone than the other or predisposed to anger and bitterness than the other one. So it's an investigation that would have to be done to try, to try to track it down. And even then, you couldn't be sure because the Bible said that the devil, a roaring lion, going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. I know for a fact that the, the devil does attack children. I've seen it before. And I, and I tell you, when he, when, 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 they do, when he does, those kids are strong and they are unmanageable until you cast them demons out. You have to cast them out. So you have to be careful. That's why, you, you, you know, that's why it's important to be careful about where you let your children go and where they spend the night and where they're sleeping over at and who they're sleeping with. You know, I'm trying to help you tonight. Glory be to God. Uh, and and, 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 and we, we need to do that because spirits jump. They leap and they attach themselves because children don't have the defense mechanisms that some of us have. And so they become easier praise to the devil. So you have to be careful about what you let your child participate and partake of. All right? Any other question concerning anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness? Any other question? Praise God. I see a hand. You, got, you have something you want to say? Oh, he's too shy. Praise God. We'll have to come back when we grow up. Praise God. Yes, sir. So that's what it is. So you're saying to me that you were still angry, still bitter, still holding on, even though he was dead and in his grave. Y'all hear me? I'm trying to help you tonight. See how deep it can run and how devastating it can be not to release it. Now, this man's testifying. He's sharing with us tonight. Now, he's here someone that he had a, a, this name for that had gone on 
wherever he was going. And he still had those emotions. Yes, sir. I believe you're going to see a new man now. Sometimes when God, when we get sick, God calls us in just to talk to him. A little while. We talk to you when you're sick. We show you stuff when you're sick. But, but, but are you getting, beginning to see the magnitude of what bitterness is? and anger can do to a person. It really can ruin your life. It really can rob you of your joy and your happiness and your peace. Is it really worth that? Is it really worth holding on to to that extent? And that's why I encourage you tonight. Do some thinking, do some praying, and ask God to help you process this and get beyond it. And once you get beyond it, don't, you know, so there's some people that have to be delivered every week for the same thing. You know, get beyond it once and for all. And then that way you don't have to deal with it anymore. Because what, I, put it I turned it over to the Lord. I put it in God's hand. I left it in his hand. So therefore, whatever occurs, whatever happens now, is up to God. Because I don't have it anymore. Sister Lisa, did you have something you wanted to say?
is very, 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 very well uh, uh, stated. Uh, but you have to be careful because see what happens in those kinds of situations. You'll go through your life trying to prove something. You know, trying to prove something. See, we got to stop trying to prove stuff too, because it can take you a lifetime to try to prove something that you're never gonna prove. Y'all don't hear me. And even if you did prove it, let's just say for conversation that you did prove it. Well, as old folks said, we still ain't gonna mount to a hill of beans. What's it gonna do for you? If you did prove it, you know. And so therefore, I can't go through my life trying to prove something to someone. I gotta. It would be more palatable for me to let it go, to release it, and not worry about it than it would to try to prove it. Because now I'm gonna spend all my life trying to prove something. And you may get 65 years old and they tell you, you still didn't prove it. And so therefore, uh, uh, and, 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 and do you see how stuff can creep in now? On a way, both of these folk, and then, and then the, and the other uh, uh, testimony, they didn't really realize mm -hmm that they had the baggage. Didn't realize it. Didn't, didn't real. Sometimes, you know, you can be hurting on the inside and you really don't realize why you're hurting. You never really challenge the source because sometimes we'll turn our face to keep from facing the reality of what's really, really hurting us and we'll play it off as something else. But tonight I challenge you, as you go home tonight, you challenge, you look, at, you look that thing in the face. You, you drag it out into the open and you say it to yourself so that you can hear it and that you can identify it and bring it back here and put it on that altar and leave it. The Bible said, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. What would be to God? And, and so, so give it to God and let it go. Release it. Live your life. The best you can live it be free to praise God, to speak to them when you see them, you know, uh, because sometimes people uh, uh, will say, I'm forgiven, but I ain't forgetting. You know, you may not forget, but you still must properly channel it when you talk to people. And because there's a lot of different things that, 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 that can injure our, our emotions, that can change our emotions. A lot of things that we come in contact with, a lot of things that we experience in childhood, uh, in, in, in adolescence, in old age, uh, we still have things that the enemy, the enemy ain't going to stop trying to attack you. I don't care how old you get. He's still going to try to dis defeat you and try to destroy you. So you still have to stay on the battlefield. And the only way to win the battle is to take it to Jesus. The only way to do it is to let him fight your battle. You know, and, and, and not be carried away with that. I just come on and give God some praise. I just thank God tonight. <laughs> some sometime I, I I like like to have dialogue rather than lecture, uh, um, to uh, because sometimes it, it, it's needful to be able to just open up and some uh, uh, just to be able to sit because there's sometimes things that happen in our lives that we just haven't been able to even say, haven't been able to say. And, and therefore, if you're not able to say it, you cannot acknowledge it. And if you can't acknowledge it, no wonder you can't be delivered. But if you'll say it, if you just, if you got to say it to yourself, you know, this is what happened to me. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm getting delivered from this. I'm confessing it before you, Lord. And I'm asking God you to give me the strength to uh, uh, get beyond it. Get beyond it. And therefore, when we come together again, we can worship God in the beauty of holiness peacefully and unrestrained. And because and, 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 that's what it's all about, being able to worship God in the beauty of holiness. When you leave here, glory be to God, you should leave here skipping. You should leave here skipping and jumping and rejoicing after having praised God. But if you haven't done that, then that's you still holding on to something. There's something that's not been remitted. And you got to let it go. We can't change things that occurred in our past. You know, everybody got one. 
praise God. You can't change things that happen, amen. So you just process, I, amen. I may not be able to change what happened in my past, but I can pick up from right here. I, I can pick up from right here. I can, I can do that. I can pick up from right here. Yes, there were some things that hurt me. Yes, there are some things that happened to me in my life that I'd rather not happen to me in my life. Yes, they hurt. Yes, they were painful. But I'm leaving them right here today, and I'm moving forward, and I'm not going to look back. I'm not going back, and I'm not going to let anybody drag me back. Y'all don't hear me. I'm not going to let no anger or uh, angry or uh, anger influencers, you know, drag me back. Because you have to be careful when people start bringing up that stuff to you. It's not harmless. It's not harmless, you know. Uh, you got to be careful about the, the kind of company you keep. Careful about the conversation you engage. Careful about what conversation you let people engage you in. You know, because the, uh, uh, people used to say misery love comes. You know, because they may be miserable themselves. You know, and, and the ones that's counseling you about your abuse, you may find out they were abused far beyond you. And they just haven't told you. So get free of this baggage so we can worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And when Mother's Day come, when Father's Day come, and they used to have a Children's Day. I don't know why they cut it out, but our children definitely need a day. Praise God. Uh, 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 but, but we ought to, we, 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 we can't be bound up on those kinds of days uh, because of negative relationships with our parents. Get free of that. You all know what I preach, pick up that phone. Make that call. Make that call. Don't let it wait. Praise God. Because uh, you don't want to wait until it's too late. The worst feeling in the world is to have a desire to tell somebody something. And you sat on it and sat on it until they died. And now you can't tell them. And you stuck with it. That's the worst feeling that you could ever have. So whatever you need to do, get her done. Amen? Come on and give God some praise. I'm through. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, uh, there's some announcements for uh, this evening. Praise God. Amen. We thank God, amen, for our announcer tonight. And then the person of Sister Asia Johnson. Praise God. Sister Asia. Amen. Wednesday, May 13, 2015. Announcements and upcoming events. Temple Servants for the month of May, Omega Rams, last names begin with M through Z. There will be a meeting for all praise dancers and members of the flag ministry tonight following Bible study in the rear of the sanctuary. Region 1 regional meeting this Saturday, May 16th. The host pastor is Elder Hill. The location is Greater New Jerusalem Holiness Temple in Beckley, West Virginia. $2 registra regional dues will be collected tonight after service in the foyer. The charter bus will leave our parking lot promptly at 7 a.m. on this coming Saturday for those who have paid for the travel. It says everyone is asked to be here at 630. Okay, it's going to leave at 6.30. Pastor said 6.30, y'all. King's Kids, Monday, May 18th at 6.30 p.m. Pack 365 Drive. Sister Wheaton will be collecting $1 for our um, Pack 365. You can make your donation by cash, check, credit card, or online. If you submit your payment by credit card or online, you must submit an envelope with your method of payment. Please note, Pastor Conferences will be be available on Tuesday evenings. Appointment times 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Contact Sister League for an appointment form. No food, beverages, or chewing gum are allowed in the sanctuary. If you need to refresh yourself, please step out and do so at the appropriate time. Please refrain from walking during reading of the scripture and altar call. Our order of services, Children's Church 9 a.m., Sunday School 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship, 11.30 a.m., evening service held on the last Sunday only of each month at 5.30 p.m., and Wednesday midweek Bible studies at 7 p.m. These are announcements. Please cover yourselves accordingly. Amen. I want to give God some praise. Thank you, Sister Asia. Those of you that will be riding on the bus um, to um, Beckley, 
uh, we want to uh, remind you, uh, please do not bring uh, fried foods onto the bus. Uh, I'm gonna have to confiscate all fried chicken at the door. No wings, drumsticks, or breasts. <laughs> Praise God. Soft drinks, uh, if you're gonna bring something to drink, um, uh, make sure it has a twist cap. I don't want you to have the, the pop types because they spew once they shake up. Uh, and um, they also have um, bags, individual bags to put your waist in um, when you're riding the bus. They will charge you extra if you litter the bus up too bad. So let's be mindful and let's have good housekeeping and uh, let's have a great time with the Lord. Uh, there will be um, uh, some refreshments. Uh, as, uh, in fact, um, there will be something, uh, some food 